Uh, and just ongoing down the road. I know that's a film that um, that you that you uh, chose. I uh, just so the audience knows, I asked uh, Jeff to pick uh, some different films to discuss today, and going down the road uh, was one of them. Uh, which is a film I I, I really love. Uh, what 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 draw uh, drew you to this uh, movie? Well, I mean, I was I I, I was part of a, a class. Um, in English cinema that was offered by, uh, sorry, in, in Canadian cinema that was offered by Peter Harcourt uh, at Crawford University uh, eons ago when I was a student there. Um, I had seen Going Down the Road on television uh, and I remembered it. I, I was probably only, let's say it aired in 69, so I would have only been about 12 years old when I saw the film. But I do remember uh, the feeling uh, at the time as I watched it um, that there was a rawness to it um, there was a sense of realism to it, um, and there was even a sense at that point in watching the film, it was a film that felt often as much like you were watching a documentary as watching a scripted feature movie. Right. So it, it stayed with me. By the time I got around to studying Canadian film, uh, of course, you couldn't get around going down the road. Going down the road being the exception in terms of, uh, the, the, its, it, in terms of its prominence, um, in terms of its the audience that it, it managed to acquire, and in terms of the very, very, very specific concern with these um, uh, Maritimers who come to Toronto, as I say, in order to try and forge a, a career and a future for themselves, and everything just kind of messes up for them. Um, that was a, you know, I, and what I remember at that point, you know, when I first started thinking about the film seriously, um, was that the the subject of the film the subject of the film which was these basically largely the, the in, largely invisible presence of these uh, uh, of the of the maritime community in Toronto itself felt a little bit like the Canadian film industry um, it was there but if you didn't know about it if you weren't mm. and around it or if you weren't professionally engaged with it you likely didn't know about it or you didn't see anything or you didn't hear anything and so right. going down the road was extremely exceptional in that it had a successful commercial run and one of the things that is significant about that commercial run is the uh, uh, number of people over the years who've commented when they saw it at that point just how revelatory it was to see a film set on the same streets as the movie theater that you were sitting and watching it in um right. You know, uh, Canada itself had not been, uh, except for the National Film Board, Canada itself had not been the under the scrutiny of movie cameras, um, which is again that goes back to the the early history and the, the the difficulty and challenges with infrastructure. But going down the road, therefore, became also uh, uh, because of its success, it launched a think I it, I it, it, the idea of a developing English Canadian cinema. Uh, but the problem with the Canadian English Canadian cinema was that it was always having its breakthroughs, but the breakthroughs were never sort of followed up very often. And in fact, if they, they were in the in the 60s and 70s, they weren't followed up on. So you have a number of interesting first feature films, and in many cases by filmmakers who then went into television or left the country, mainly because at that point there was no industry to sustain it. You know, to ma making films, as you know, is an extremely labor-intensive activity. And if you don't have, if it, you can't continue to make films as Don Shabib did using grocery carts for dollies, um, that was not something that, that was as sustainable as a, uh, it was a great idea at the time, but it couldn't really a, a, a film industry. So, the, but the, the, the process of discussing Canadian film, um, revisiting Canadian film, even revisiting the films of the National Film Board, a lot of that activity, which was, yes, very much coached in sort of cultural nationalism and the presumption that we needed a national cinema, um, those, were, those were things that were, um, uh, that was largely kicked into place by making it going down the road. What I love about that film is you know things go things go bad as soon as they get to toronto it's not like they have a, a good time <laughs> like you feel so bad for them right like it's like the ant won't answer the door and they're in the salvation army and and uh but i i i i you know it, it's to me i think it's a crime i i only just saw it last year yeah for the first time and i watched it again last night and um when i think of 
uh, you know, growing up and watching, you know, the Four Hundred Blows and Truffaut yep. and Godard and even early Scorsese and Cassavetes, I'm like, oh my God, this is a Canadian. This like that. I was I was so in awe, and I'm thinking we had a we had our own, you know, of of that style of like documentary, and I can't believe I I only you know I'd hear I'd heard about it over the years, like oh let's go you know just clips of. This is what Toronto looked like 50 years ago. Right. Um, and but I, I I was just um, I was just in awe of it. But it's such a it's such a, a, a fantastic fantastic movie. It's it's interesting for me to hear you put that film in the context of, for example, the the French New Wave. Uh, right. Films of John Cassavetes. That's really interesting to me because that certainly is. Um, a particularly, I think, rich and important way of, of looking at this film. Uh, yeah. It is something which is very much, I think, influenced by the uh, the, the the immediacy, the guerrilla style, all developed in documentary. Don Chabib had worked in documentary already for a number of years. The cinematographer Richard Leiterman had been working in documentary for a number of years, uh, as uh, also in the United States as well as Canada. Um, so yes. Because I, I I mention that as a as a, as t in taking up your point, it's also a way to look at this film, which doesn't which which allows you to look at it in context. Because there are many ways in which going down the road is a difficult film for people to watch today, simply because the style seems so remote. Um, right. And I think that the the what when you put it in that context. And yes, I think that, for example, Shabib, who'd gone to school in California, was one of the very first film schools in in the world. I think had gone to film school in California. Um, he was basically he was steeped in those films. The on campus, the the showing of French New Wave films of, of the of, of European art cinema of the American independent film industry at that point in time, which was also kind of just getting up and running, um, was a was very much the sort of the uh, that was the amniotic fluid, right? That the film was basically birthed in, and I think that's a very productive way of looking at going down the road in a way that yeah. kind of around what might be some other hurdles for contemporary viewers to watch it is think of this as basically an attempt at establishing a new wave, uh, an English new wave in Canada, which never happened. Right? Was Don was Don Shabib because I know he did documentaries uh, before going down the road. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so as you say, he went to school uh, in California and was watching those new wave films. So, do you know if he had an interest in in narratives uh, uh, at that? You know, even before he made going down the road when he was making the documentaries. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, he did. Okay. He did yes. Um, his idol was, and perhaps still is, Mr. Shabib is still very much still with us. Um, yeah. It, it's it's. Um, he idolized, for example, the films of John Ford. So you don't right. get more sort of classically Hollywood and in some ways conservative than that. It, he really believed in, and I think it, it's, it's it, you look at go, going down the road, it's not likely to remind you of any John Ford film very, very quickly. No, <laughs> no. It doesn't feel like a John Ford film at all. But that was his, that was his ideal. He did want to make, he did want to make um, uh, going down the road was a Canadian film about Canadian issues set in Canada. Uh, those were those that what that was his motivation was to make sort of narrative films, uh, but he also was he wanted them to um, engage with certain kind of particular economic uh, political realities uh, in Canada, and um, he wanted to work in Canada and he wanted to stay in Canada and he stayed in Canada and he had a very, you know, he had a long career, but I think he would be the first one to admit that it was never easy. It was not a, right. cho not a choice that made life any easier for a filmmaker in Canada than to decide to stay in Canada and make films here. And this was also something that is, is important to kind of remember uh, about Canadian films, Robert, which is uh, Canadian films of that era is that um, in the absence of a commercial industry, uh, they came to rely upon the sort of institutional industry, the institutional opportunities provided by the National Film Board and CBC. Uh, and so uh, it was, it was the, 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 the significance of both of those institutions in the various sort of development of Canadian films is absolutely critical. It absolutely, it, it is absolutely critical. 
And uh, for example, let's step over to Quebec for a second. Quebec in the 1960s basically had a new wave, and that new wave largely produced by the National Film Board. So it could be done, but again, it looked like the advantage of language and cultural distinction was something that was really critical in allowing that to succeed as much as it did. Mm -hmm. It's 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 incredible to me just watching it again last night. Just like the immediacy of it, like I you feel everything. Like you feel like you're there with those guys. You feel all the struggles. Not not necessarily that they're you know responding or or getting so emotional, but just uh, in the way he would hang on their faces, just yeah. you know out smoking a cigarette. We're watching the trains go by or throwing the stones in the. In the uh, uh, the the pond, and um, you know, lying in bed at night, awake, and uh, God, it's it's uh, it's amazing how much he did with just the looks and the expressions on the actors' uh, faces. But it, has that ever has has anyone ever tried to restore that? Because the image, I imagine, is from an old. Um, it's it seems like it's an old print that perhaps needs to be remastered, or I, think- I don't know if you know. What- The last remastering took place um, um, several years ago, uh, around 2011. Uh, that's when the film, oh, okay, it, the film was released, uh, was re-released um, uh, on the occasion of Shabib's sequel to Going Down the Road, which was produced, I think, in 2010. Um, yeah. At, at that point, that was the last time I think it was remastered, and that remains kind of the best, the best. Uh, version available of going down the road, you can clean that movie up as, as much as as much as you yeah. want. Yeah, but it's it you know for instance, it ain't ever going to look like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. There's no good. There's right. No, and what's very interesting, I mean, just to follow up on what you were saying, is that what you can see in that film is very much the influence of documentary filmmaking. Right. Um, apart from the central uh, cast, um, uh, Pete. And Joey, um, their girlfriend, and a couple of their co-workers—it's all non-professionals. It's all non-professionals, and it's all shot sort of on location. Uh, the cinematographer, who played a huge role in defining um, kind of what that film looked like and the tone of the film, was Richard Leiterman, who had worked extensively in documentary. So I think what you see in that film, what you're responding to. And those moments of, of of just pure observation, which was something else that Peter Harcourt focused on in John Chavit's movies, was the opportunity for reflection, the opportunity for characters to basically be inside themselves, um, right. and that's a difficult thing to kind of capture. But it was there in that film, and if you were sufficiently invested in the predicament of these people, sufficiently predict, sufficiently sort of invested in that emotionally. The uh, it became a very raw, very immediate experience, and I think that that yeah, yeah. Yet what you have to remember is is the in, incredible influence of the documentary background of filmmakers in Canada at the time. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because even the the quality is even to me it's and I in a good way uh, is even rougher rougher and grittier than. Uh, say Cassavetti's faces. Uh, yeah. um, I, I don't know what was he shooting on. I don't know if you happen to know uh, what what kind of film stock it was. I don't know. I mean, it was 16 millimeter. That's 16. Okay. He shot it on 16, um, which was sort of that. That was the standard for even feature films in Canada at that time. Right. Right. Absolutely. And I, I, I wanted to jump to uh, Mon Uncle Antoine, which uh, was another choice of yours yeah. today, which I, I just saw the other night. Uh, again, hadn't seen it before, and and really like, really, really liked that one as well. Oh. What 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 uh, uh, brought you to pick that? Uh, why is that an essential Canadian film? Do you think? Well, it's essential in a couple of ways. In uh, on the on the on the industrial level it's significant because it was so very widely seen it was a national film board uh, a national film board product that that, that felt like and um, it felt very much like a, um, a, a a fully fledged french film is what it what it felt like if that's not a little vague um but the thing was i remember uh, also seeing that film on television uh which is where i got sort of introduced to a number of canadian films Um, just finding that film devastating. Uh, mm. de- oh yeah, it just that's just emotionally so devastating, mm. and yet there was something so beautiful and so simple about this film. 
Um, and I think that Mon Oncle Antoine uh, was one of the first breakthrough uh, films, uh, Quebec films, to basically find an audience around the world and make its way to film festivals around the world. So what you had then, what in that case, was a film of enormous power made with enormous skill and sensitivity by Claude Jutra, um, which spoke to, it, it, it traveled is what I think the, the word that they would use for it, Robert. It played very well sort of around the world. And the predicament again was very specifically Quebec. It was set in Quebec during the Duplessis years in the 1950s. So it was historically very much set in an uncompromising way about a particular cultural experience in time. But it had all of those so-called elusive universal values that made it play, I think, very effectively and very powerfully wherever it was sent. What I love so much about it is that you, you for me anyways, I, I was finding that at first, I'm like, well, nothing, nothing's happening. But then I realized, wait a minute, there's a lot happening. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> when you're, if you're, you got to be really, uh, and I like a slow film uh, or even yeah. where I'm like, what's going on here? But uh, I, I, I was finding myself losing a bit of patience. But then in the, in the, I think, I think, I think I'll enjoy it more on another, more viewings now that I, I, uh, I, I, I truly know what's, what's going on uh, between all these sort of, uh, masks that they're wearing uh and then uh, you we see the uncle the uncle at the end i mean i did not expect him to crack in the way he does with his uh nephew and i was like oh this is these people are not these people are not happy and all the you know with the wages and working in the mines and um it's uh it's a tough film but it really is. really it's, yeah but it's gorgeous isn't it it's also oh yeah you yeah. Know, it's also, it's just it's, it's also just an absolutely beautiful film. Um, but what's interesting because we can one of the things you, the, the, to get back to something you said about um, uh, going down the road that I think also applies to Mon Oncle Antoine is the time that it takes to establish character um, and that character in, in the establishment of character through environment. Um, Pete and Joey yeah. going down the road are largely defined their their own tragedy their own sense of exclusion the, um, their shortcomings their dreams is very much framed within that particularly cold dark gritty urban landscape of toronto that should be cap captured in that film so well my yeah. uncle Anton is also a film about a quebec that isn't there anymore even by 1970 it wasn't there anymore but it it sees its story in the context of these people, of this culture, of this landscape, of weather, for God's sake, right? I mean, mm. the snow is a huge presence in Mon Oncle Antoine. And it's just, again, as a metaphor, it just seems so so kind of simple, but so powerful, which is this unrelenting dumping of dampening stuff. Right. Everywhere right. you go, and riding in sleighs. And, 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 and so that the, the time that the film takes to get to what you would think is the, the real story of the film um, is time which is taken, I think, very importantly by a yeah. atmosphere, by establishing culture. It observes the rituals of the communities in Quebec in the late, in, uh, in the mid 1950s. Uh, and it does so uh, in a way that does, does require certain patience. But again, if you take your influence not as Hollywood films, but for example, as European films, right? the world had never seen much slower films than a lot of those films that were being made by people in Europe at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th th those films were, and those films were, 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 were very challenging to a lot of audiences. You could send people to a Godard movie and tell them, for example, that he was one of the most significant filmmakers in the history of filmmaking. Um, but when you actually looked at the films, you realized that they they weren't going to be doing any of the work for you, right? And right. so on another level, something like Going Down the Road um, and Mon Oncle Antoine require an emotional investment and a sense of confidence yeah. from the viewer that is ultimately very much rewarded. I mean, it's really totally rewarded. And then you might even argue that that was something that is very much perhaps a distinct, distinguishing trait of Canadian movies at the time was the attention mm. The context and landscape. Yeah, very, very well said. And what really stuck out to me was when he they went to get the corpse of the fifth, the, the young boy who died. 
And when the mother was getting emotional, the, the uncle just looked at her and I found it fascinating that he didn't have anything to say. Like he didn't have the, the outward um, expression of compassion to hug her or say yep. sorry. I mean, he was so kind of like, oh, someone's crying. Ugh, like, I don't know what to do with that, which yep. is very common you know, anyways, generally speaking. Uh, but I, I, I thought that really lent to the coldness of both of all of the characters' emotional life uh, and in terms of uh, their atmosphere and how it all sort of um, intertwined. Yes. But yeah, a, a, a really remarkable film that I, I, I also glad that Criterion Collection have put that out. Yes. Um, as well. Um, and what's interesting in both of those films, are both both going down the road and the non Tuan are films about disappointment. That's also that's a hard sell, Robert. That's I mean, yeah. you know, I wrote yeah. I, I wrote for years about Canadian films and I often had to kind of check myself because I realized that what I was describing and often in terms of themes of Canadian films, which is over and over again about failure, about dreams that basically never come true. It's the opposite of the Wizard of Oz. Right, um, right. The, 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 that, that, that was a kind of, that was also for a lot of people, uh, Canadian cinema was considered to be something of a, just a, a huge downer. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because you don't look at the, you don't, you don't look at, for example, you don't uh, uh, critic, uh, criticize Ingmar Bergman for being a downer. And well, that's, yeah, he was a downer and Tony <laughs> was a downer. Godard was a downer. Yeah. And what was seen at the time was a kind of an honest reflection of um, the the uh, the world as it was at that time, we weren't alone in making films that were were critical of establishment, that were critical of uh, sort of false dreams. Put that um, uh, in the context of, um, uh, as I say, all of these other inter international movements in film. It's and you put that against Hollywood films. Remember, the importance in sort of marketing Hollywood films the promise that they're going to make you feel good, that you're going to have fun. Uh, and, and and also that if there are any sort of issues uh, at work in the films, that they are going to be resolved largely by the end of the film. Right. Um, and, and this is, this is it, it has, that has largely been the practice of Hollywood filmmaking and remains that so up to this day. You can see Canadian films are actually at that point are very much reacting to that. They don't trust that. They don't trust the idea of neatly packaged narratives uh, in which the protagonists achieve their dreams and live happily ever after. That was just not some, the Canadian film uh, industry, uh, Canadian films at, uh, both in Quebec and English Canadian films are very skeptical of that and very skeptical of the idea of there being um, any way to, Loose ends were not easily tied up. These movies were about loose ends that unraveled. But, you know, it, when you think of that in terms of the, uh, in terms of a lot of what was going on in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, a lot of the subversive energy in so many cultural fronts had to do with that deep distrust and that deep sense of disillusionment um, with, with the, the, the world as it was in terms of a, a status quo that needed to be questioned. That, that also puts Canadian movies somewhat on the outs, is that you can't promise people a, a good time so often when you send them to a Canadian film.